What's up everybody, welcome back to another video. Today what I wanna do is go over the wp-config.php file. This file is one of the most important files whether you're on a production website or a development site. It sets up the configuration and the constants that are going to be used by your website. And in particular, when we're developing our themes and plugins and working on our local projects, there are a couple of constants we're gonna to wanna to enable. So in this video, I walk you through and explain what each constant does. So real quickly, if you want to support this project, if you want to support the WP theme itself, consider heading over to picksomeweb.com, go to WordPress themes, and purchase a copy of WP. With this, you'll get all my files and the documentation on how to code your own custom WordPress theme. And you can also check out some of my other videos that I have. You see, this is going to be a long series where I walk you through step by step how to code a custom theme using some of the best practices and tools. Some other resources you could use is you can go to the developer.wordpress.org website. They have a couple of articles that you could check out. One of them is the advanced administration WordPress with the WP config file. As you can see, this is a very long read. And then there's the other article over here. It's a little bit shorter. This one's also on the same site and it's about debugging WordPress in general. And then you have another article over here. This one's another long read, 24 minutes long. And this is the Common APIs Handbook. All right, so let's jump over to VS Code and get started on implementing some of our constants we're gonna set in the file itself. So the wp-config.php file is located in the root of your WordPress project. And again, this is gonna be for development purposes in terms of the constants we're gonna set. Now, most of the constants we're gonna be using can be found in these files over here, in the WP includes folder in the default-constants.php file. This is where you'll be able to find some of the constants we're gonna be utilizing. Then we have the regular functions.php file that's also located in the WP-includes folder. And this one, if we scroll up to the top, are the functions used in the main WordPress API. So you will be able to find some of the functions and constants here as well. And then another one is going to be the load.php file, again, in the wp-includes folder. It's important to know these files because you want to get familiar with how the WordPress core operates and get familiar with how WordPress is actually coded. So that's why I provide these files as demonstrations over here. All right, so if we go back to the wp-config.php file. So this is what we actually have now, currently, in terms of the development section. Now, obviously, if you scroll up, you see we have the other values, but we're not going to be going over this too much, in particular because this is not going to be what we're using basically for development purposes in terms of debugging. Again, this is all about debugging your WordPress installation, which is important to be familiar with when you're actually working on a custom theme or a custom plugin. And then you can also learn more information by following this link over here as well. All right, so we already have this already here. And what this does is basically saying that we want to be able to debug our WordPress installation. On a development site, you want this set to be true. On a production site, you generally want this set to false unless you're going to be logging it into a different directory and folder that's secure and where generally people wouldn't be able to access. So on a production site, this would be set to false. On a development site, this is set to true. All right, so now what I want to do is I want to be able to show you how to disable the fatal error handler, which is basically the white screen of death. The constant we're going to be utilizing is going to be able to gracefully display a user-friendly message instead of just the white screen of death itself. So I'll go right over here. So this constant right here, we're setting it to true so that way we can handle the graceful generation of a message instead of just a regular white screen of death. Now the next one, this is going to set up our environment type and we're setting it to local. Now this can have a couple of values. You can set it to local how we're doing here, which is generally going to be if you're a single developer working on your own projects locally on your own system. Again, a development environment. The next value is also development. Now it can get confusing. Why do we have a local and a development setting or value for this constant right here? And the reason is because you might be working on a team, a distributed team. And if you are doing that, then you're going to set it to development because it's not just going to be on your local environment. So basically think about it as local is for the individual and development is for a team. The other options are staging. If you're going to have a staging website, you can set it to that value or you can set it to production, which is for a live website. Now this constant over here, the WP development mode, we could set it to core, which is if you're working on a WordPress core itself, plugin or theme. Since we're working on a custom theme, it just makes sense to set the development mode to theme itself. 
and now we have the WP debug log. We're setting this to true. And when you set it to true, it'll save a log file if there's any issues in your WP-content folder. And the file name will be debug.log. And then we have the define WP debug display. By default, if you have this set up over here to true, it'll display in the HTML the errors that are taking place on the site or any issues. You can set it to true, or in my case, I'm setting it to false over here. So basically, it's still going to log it, but it just won't display it in the HTML. It's really up to your preference if you choose to display the information directly in the browser itself, or if you just want to deal with it at a later point in time and just check over your log files. And this is a constant for PHP itself, basically saying that we want to enable log errors. So if you look over here, it sets the value of the configuration option. This next one is for displaying the errors for PHP itself, and here, we're setting it to zero to be false. And this next one, we're setting up an error log for PHP itself. Now this is gonna be a different log file. This is particularly for PHP errors in general, and it might come in handy if you wanna see different information and to see if there's consistency between what's generated with the WP debug log and the PHP log as well. Now this one, if set to true, then it forces WordPress to use the unminified versions of CSS and JavaScript files. That'll be useful for development purposes. And on a production site, you want it set to false, but by default, you just won't have to place that there because it'll be false by default. So we can set it to true since we're in a development environment. Now the next couple of options over here are constants are gonna be in particular to the query monitor plugin itself. We have this one right here. It basically enables the capabilities panel to be displayed with information about what capabilities are in effect. And then this one, it allows the use of symbolic links for the database query logs. And again, useful for debugging purposes. These will not be on a production site. This is only for development. Now this next one over here, this saves the database queries to an array and it can be displayed either with the query monitor plugin or with other developer tools. Now the thing is, if you're gonna use this and not use the query monitor plugin, then you would have to add additional code to your footer.php file. And for this purpose, let me actually start up XAMPP and demonstrate how this looks. All right, so XAMPP is started. I'm going to go, let me save this first. Let me go to the browser. What I'll do here, is I'll go to my WP test local website. All right, so now I'm in my browser. I'm in my local host, WP test WordPress installation. I'm gonna go to the end, and what I'll do is in my editor itself, I'll go back to VS Code. I'm gonna open up the footer.php file. So I'll go to the bottom, and just under here, what I'll do is paste in this code. So basically what I'm doing here, in the footer section, I have it saying, if current user can, this is checking the capabilities, manage options, which is basically just for administrators. Then we're gonna have the global WordPress database variable right there. And then we're gonna echo out, we're gonna use the print underscore R PHP function right there. We're gonna echo out the queries. Then we close the echo, and we could also echo get defined constants. So let me actually comment this out first, save it, Let's go back to our browser. Let me do it while inspecting elements. Reload again. And what this shows you is that since we used our if conditional, if current user can manage options, it's not going to display on the site because currently we're not logged in. So we don't have that capability since we're not logged in. So that's why you would have that conditional check. But if we do log in, let's go back to the front of the site. Now if we go to the bottom. Now you see the arrays of the queries that are being utilized. So that gives you a lot of extra information. All right, so let's see what the other snippet of code does itself. Let's go here and comment this part out and uncomment this part and then save it. Let's reload. And now you get all of the constants that are generated. So this is good for debugging purposes as well to get familiar with some of these to see what constants you're using on your site. Back to VS Code. All right, so we can comment this out, reload, and now you see, you can't see that information. All right, so now let's go back to VS Code. I'm gonna go back to the WP config file, and the next constant we're gonna work with is gonna be the default theme constant. Now, let's say you wanna create a new website locally in your development environment, and you don't wanna have to go through the process of changing the default theme. If you already add the theme that you wanna use to your themes folder, you can set this constant there. And instead of using the default WordPress theme from automatic, it'll use your theme as the default. This is actually also good on production sites, especially if you're using a WordPress multi-site and wanna automatically set the default theme that's used on any subsites. 
Now this one, let me change that up. All right, so these two over here, this one sets the home URL for WordPress, and this one sets the site URL. Now this you would typically see, before I save it, let me go back to the browser. Just go over here, and go to settings and general, and you see it right here. The WordPress address URL and the site address URL. So if we go back to VS Code, let's save that, go back to the browser, and reload, and now we see it's grayed out because we set it permanently inside of the config file. Now that's gonna be beneficial because it does provide a little bit more performance in terms of your WordPress installation since it won't have to deal with a database query. All right, back to VS Code. And this one, by setting it to false, it disables the caching in WordPress itself. For development purposes, you want this set to false. On a production site, this should be set to true. Now this constant disallows file editing. Now what is that? Before I save it, let me go to the browser. Let me go to Appearance and Theme File Editor. You get this heads up, you gotta read it, take a look at it. Here, you can actually edit some of the code inside of your theme itself. And then you can do the same thing with the Plugin File Editor. You get the same heads up, and you can see the code and edit the file here. Now the problem with this is that anybody who's logged in with the proper permissions will have the capability to actually edit these files. So it's a good security feature to disable this. So if you go back to VS Code, let's save it back to the browser. And now if we go back to Appearance, you no longer see the option there for the file edit and for plugins as well. All right, let's go back to VS Code. So now this one sets the standard memory limit for WordPress to function. This value you would adjust based on the resources you have in your system, but this gives a little bit more performance to your installation. And this one in particular, this sets the memory limit to a max, and you're gonna use this one to give a little bit more performance to the administrative functions of how WordPress works. And now this one right here, with WordPress you could set post revisions, and by default it'll set it to a couple of revisions, but when you're in development, you might wanna set this to zero. On a production site, you can set it to like three, maybe five, but you don't wanna set too high because that will make your database larger. Now this one's for dealing with emptying your trash in terms of deleting a post, deleting a page, or deleting a custom post type. By default, it's set to save it for a few days or maybe a week. You could set it to zero to have it automatically get deleted, or you can set it to a lower number. Let's say you want it set to, after three days, delete your trash. So we're setting it to zero here, and that's good for development purposes. Now this constant, we're setting it to false, but when set to true, WordPress will concatenate all scripts into a single file to improve performance, but for debugging purposes, setting it to false is a setting we're gonna be utilizing. And this one is about compressing scripts. When we set it to true, which is the default option, it'll compress all your scripts, meaning it'll minify the code, which is good for performance purposes. But by setting it to false, it's better for debugging because we'll be able to actually see in a human readable way the scripts that our installation's working with. And then we have the same type of constant for CSS. This is for JavaScript, and this is for CSS. And this one, on a production site, you would want this set to true. This enforces gzip compression, which is good for performance purposes. But on a development site, we're gonna be setting it to false. And this one right here is for the auto save interval. We're setting it to 120. You could set it to a lower value if you wanna have it save automatically in a shorter time frame, Or you could set it to a higher value if you don't wanna utilize your system resources with automatic saves of a post or page. All right, so we'll save the file, and then I'll just scroll up to show you all the constants we're setting again. Again, this is just for development purposes and for debugging WordPress. We're setting the debug to true, the disable fatal error handler to true. We're setting the environment type, the development mode. We're setting our debug log, and the debug display to false. Then we have some of our PHP options over here in terms of log errors, display errors, and error log. Script debug is set to true. And these are for the query monitor and then for the save queries. And again, with this one, if you're using the query monitor, you'll have that as well. Or you can have this code right here. I have it commented out, but you would uncomment the section you want to utilize. And then we have our default theme and our home and site URLs, our cache set to false. And these are the values we're going to be using with our WordPress installation for debugging purposes. Get familiar with them, copy them. And I'll add this to my website so that way you can easily copy and paste it and use it in your local WordPress projects. And again, you can find most of these constants inside these three files or inside the WP Includes folder of your WordPress installation. All right, so hopefully you found this video helpful. If you did, give it a thumbs up. If you want to support this channel, consider purchasing a copy of DevWP. It definitely helps us out. If you have any thoughts, comments, or ideas, share them down below in the comments area. And as always, thanks for watching. 
and I'll catch you in the next video. Happy coding.